And uh, right when we get, went to commercial, I noticed a news story I didn't talk about in the opening segment. And we don't have a lot of details yet, but the MLW WWE lawsuit appears to be done. After issuing a notification regarding a settlement, it was filed in the U.S. District Court in the Northern District of California. In accordance with the court's standing order for civil cases, MLW and WWE hereby submit this notice of settlement to notify the court that the parties have settled this action. Parties are in the process of completing the final settlement documents. Expect to file the appropriate dismissal papers within the next 30 days. MLW had filed an antitrust suit against WWE January 2022 with allegations of WWE attempting to undermine competition and monopolize a pro wrestling market by interfering in MLW's contracts and business prospects. MLW alleged WWE pressured third parties into abandoning contracts and prospective relationships for MLW. This includes a pending deal for MLW with Vice TV in 2021, which was killed at the last minute, and MLW blaming a WWE. Suit was dismissed in February, but MLW had 21 days to amend its complaint, did so, and were successful. The amended suit stated WWE violated the Sherman Antitrust Act, stifled competition through its exclusivity agreements with broadcasters. So I'm sure we probably will never find out details of the settlement, would be my guess. But uh, it has been settled. So uh, that is the end of that for now. Probably the best news that could have happened for both sides. Um, MLW, unless you were guaranteed to win, was going to be dragged into some pretty deep waters financially when it comes to what TKO has. And WWE surely does not want any discovery and want anything more to come out in the process of a trial that would make them look like that they violated antitrust acts so as well as many other things possibly who knows what could come out when it comes to wwe so is this enough to keep mlw going is this going to be enough to kind of pad them as they continue to look for a tv deal we'll see you know i'm not sure how their fight tv deals are going but court obviously is continuing on and we'll see what ends up happening with mlw here in 2024 Hey, Steel. Well, we'll talk about that later. We should talk about the big show this weekend, this NXT deadline show, which, speaking of A Steel, his student CM Punk actually opened up the show. And yes, the story is that tonight on Raw, CM Punk will decide if he should sign with Raw, SmackDown, or NXT. We're going to find out tonight. I'll let you guys know tomorrow. What are the Vegas odds on NXT? If he's signing with NXT. But anyway, how had... happy would you be? Would it ruin everything for you if he went on your favorite show of all time, all your life? They're all my favorite shows. What are you talking about? I don't care where he goes. Uh, oh, they're all, they're all your matter favorites. to me. Aye. As long as people pay to see where he goes, subscribe. And then pay, exactly, and pay you to listen yes, about where exactly. he goes. exactly. So we had a bunch of matches on the show. By far, by far, the best match on the show was the Men's Iron Survivor Challenge. Hallelujah. Which was so ridiculously great, and it was impeccably timed. Yep. And I saw some people on the internet mad that I kept mentioning that the women's uh, Iron Survivor Challenge was was uh, Meh, intricately booked and timed and practiced for weeks. They both were. I've said that since well, day one. <laughs> and uh, you can't have a match this intricately booked in the last couple of minutes calling it in the ring of course it was intricately wait built. a second lance storm is going to call no, you no he's that not if you he had... watched this match he'd know he's been watching this show he knows what's <laughs> called in the ring what's not well, but the match was awesome veterans you could hit your match time then you and know. the the story was essentially that everyone's favorite wrestler in nxt is trick williams and throughout the match 25 minute time limit and for the first i swear to god 23 minutes and 30 seconds this bloke just keeps getting pinned and sent to this penalty box over and over again. And the crowd's just like, ah, they're sad. And then uh, finally, with a minute and a half left, it's uh, there's a three-way tie for first place. Uh, Braun Breaker and Tyler Bate and I think Dijak all had three points. Josh Briggs. Trick has zero. Oh, Briggs had two. Briggs had two. Thank you, Mike. Uh, it was three, three, three with those other guys that I mentioned. Thank you. And anyway, so uh, with a minute thirty left, 
Thank God we're on video today. This guy gets three pins in a row. And so there's like nine seconds or something left in the match. And he's tied it up. But behind him is Braun Breaker setting him for that spear. And Trick turns around. And Braun rushes in to pin him and win this match. But Trick does his leaping V-trigger knee. And he hits Braun right in the head and he pins him and he wins the match and man this place went absolutely nuts for this finish because it wasn't just they wanted the guy to win but the match was booked so well that even me who knew who won I was like there's no way this guy could possibly win like it's impossible at this point like what are they gonna do how are they gonna screw but they didn't and in fact he uh it was not only him winning but convincing the fans that at best, at best, he might get a point. But then he came back to win it all. It was awesome. Awesome match. And it's even more awesome because now we know where it goes. It is it is Trick getting a title shot at New Year's Evil. He will almost invariably be screwed by Carmelo Hayes, who we're going to find out did attack him because Lexus King on the show did admit, I didn't attack the guy. I was just I was just taking credit for it because everybody was like, you know, praising me because I'm a bad guy. So he admitted he didn't do it. That made Carmelo mad. Why would Carmelo be mad? Mm, because he did it. So anyway, Carmelo can screw him out of his world title match, which of course will make Carmelo the biggest heel in the company. And then they can build their match towards WrestleMania weekend and Trick can beat Carmelo at the, uh, you know, how many people are going to have there? 13,000, 14,000 people? I mean, the place is going to be packed. And they'll get their big Trick Williams victory on that show. It's awesome. The whole thing was great. Can't complain about that layout. Could not complain about the layout of the match, as you mentioned, because of the way that they did it as well. And the fact that you were running out of time, him going and trying to get a pin and then maybe thinking at the end that Carmelo was going to screw him or something was going to happen. They had that card that was in the fans' minds as well, too. So... I'm with you. I thought it was fantastic. Again, there was nothing wrong with the women's match, but the way that this one was laid out, the way this one was timed, and how they did everything right when it came to everyone's favorite, Trick Williams, you can't complain about it whatsoever. The only real complaint now in hindsight is I probably would have had that match as the semi-main event because the cage match between Kiana and Roxanne suffered a little bit. So that's probably... Should the have been the main I event. Well, yeah, I mean, you could absolutely argue that. You you could, but I understood what they were doing there. But the, at the least, in hindsight, it should have been the semi-main. Because, listen, I mean, you could, you could, it doesn't really matter, but at the end of the match, at the end of the main event, which was Ilya Dragunov beating Baron Corbin, I mean, the match ended, and then out came Trick to alert him that he was next for the, uh, next for the belt. But you could have easily done it the other way, where Ilya yeah. Dragunov retains the title, Trick wins the main event, and then Ilya comes out and says, you're next, brother, and I beat you within an inch of your life the first time, so mm -hmm. you better get training here. So, I thought the main event was uh, a very good match. I know some people were bored, but I thought Dragunov and Baron Corbin did an excellent job. Uh, it's hard for someone to be bored during a Dragunov match, and I understand that people do not like Baron Corbin, and I'm not saying that this was Flair Steamboat or anything like that, but it served a purpose, and they told a little story that was believable with the two characters that they had, or believable enough, I should say, with the two characters that they had, and he got a title defense out of the way. Baron Corbin, for those who don't like him, to me... It, frankly should be right in the mix in NXT all of the time the way he's able to use his size and use his experience and his real life riches to rub in the face of all of these people on the come up so I actually enjoy Baron Corbin a lot there and I thought the title match was very solid thank you for watching make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again